Good afternoon or good morning. Welcome to CFP Board's Virtual Career Fair and welcome to our live panel presentation about starting a career in financial planning. My name is Eddie Demirovich. I am the Director of Talent Pipeline here at the CFP Board and I am honored to serve as your moderator along with four terrific speakers who I will introduce in just a moment. Um, our speakers represent different types of firms in the financial planning profession and the financial services industry. And they are here to talk about different career entry points and career tracks available at their firms. This session is designed specifically for college students, recent graduates and career changers, but really anyone interested in starting a career in financial planning. So we're going to talk about how to get started in this career, whether it's uh, through an internship perhaps or an entry level position. We'll talk about different types of career tracks in financial planning. And we'll talk about training programs that our employers offer, including importantly, uh, what support is available for new hires to attain CFP certification as a way to advance in their career. Ultimately, our goal here for today is that you come away with useful information and guidance to find that career path that really is the right fit for you so you can be successful in this profession. Um, and with that said, allow me to introduce our four speakers today. Um, Shelly Serenity is the executive in charge of leading the National Advisor Development Program at Merrill Wealth Management. She is also involved in the company's diversity and inclusion efforts and has actually co-founded the company's LGBTQ plus executive leadership council. Welcome, Shelly. Thank Eric, you. Eric Lukbert, CFP, is the head of advice methodology and financial planning at T. Rowe Price Associates, where he is responsible for recruiting and developing of new financial planners. Great to have you, Eric. Danelle Stewart, also CFP, is the president and partner at Mission Wealth, where she oversees the hiring and training of new advisors to achieve the company's vision of providing the best in-class wealth management services to clients. And Dan Southers is the Financial Advisor Development Program Manager at Vanguard, where he leads the development of new advisors, as well as the company's College to Corporate Advice Internship Program. Great to have you, Danelle and Dan, as well. Okay, I'm going to ask each of our panelists a few questions. You are also um, welcome to ask questions, those of you in our audience. Um, you can type your question in the Q&A box and we'll dedicate time at the end of this panel to answer your questions. If we don't get to your question for some reason, each of our employers is exhibiting today. Uh, so we encourage you to visit them in the exhibit hall and ask your question there. Uh, when you are there in the exhibit hall, you can of course also learn more about their company and even apply for their open positions. So let's get started. The first question I have is going to be for each of our panelists. Um, can you please tell us a bit more about your firm and career opportunities that are available specifically for college students, recent graduates, and career changers? And I'm going to start with, with you, Shelley. Yeah, thank, thank you, Eddie, and hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us and just thrilled to be here this morning to talk a little bit about Merrill Wealth Management, as well as for all of you uh, to really continue your career uh, in planning and wealth management for our clients. Um, here at Merrill, we have uh, you know, roughly 14,000 advisors uh, across different platforms, whether it be our development program, whether it be our core advisor base or our private wealth management that are focused on serving all of our clients and prospects, right? And really helping them get to the additional level uh, that they need to, to achieve their goals and focus on goals-based wealth management. We're keenly focused on what we refer to as the modern Merrill, and it's really made up of five main components. And comprehensively serving our clients 
uh, which is holistic wealth management, right? All of the products, services uh, that we can offer to our clients to ensure that we help them meet their goals uh, and planning being a key piece of that, right? Uh, you can't, can't help a client uh, reach their goals unless you know what those goals are and helping plan them to get there. Uh, our digital platforms, uh, clearly we want to have that available to our client base, but we are bullish on advice, right? So we are certainly advisor led, uh, powered by digital. We wanna be a market leader in household acquisition and continue to uh, work, work through that piece. We have diversity as a commercial imperative uh, and fully understand the needs that all of our client base has. Uh, and we wanna be able to reflect our communities and the communities that we serve. We have countlessly time and time again, uh, been able to really reach out to uh, different communities and clients uh, that didn't think that uh, planning or wealth was something for them. Uh, and we've been able to continue to drive that forward. Uh, and then finally, is developing our next generation of advisors. And we'll talk more about what our programs are, what that means in terms of uh, planners, uh, business developers uh, in, our, in our next question. But that's really where we're focused uh, here at Merrill. Thank you, Shelley. Very, very helpful. Um, Danelle, same question for you. Great, thank you so much for having us here today. Uh, Mission Wealth is a 100% employee-owned national RIA, Registered Investment Advisor. We are a planning-first firm. We have about 45 CFP professionals here on staff, and we are independent and act as fiduciaries for our clients. Many clients come to us as a result of some big change or transition in their lives. It might be getting ready to plan for retirement or sell a business. It might be something unfortunate like loss of a spouse or a divorce. It could be an inheritance or a health event, but some change to the complexity in their situation where they find themselves needing more advice and more financial clarity. Uh, we do have an internship program, which we have been investing in. We bring in junior year college students and teach them all about Mission Wealth and provide on-the-job training with the ultimate goal of hiring them after graduation. We have, for uh, newer recent grads, we have a Wealth Advisor Associate position for those who have some related coursework and an experience. We support them through getting licensed and working toward their CFP. And we provide a great clear career path and career track for them to pursue becoming an advisor. For career changers, we have sponsored CFP candidates through our Mission Wealth Scholars Program. And currently we are sponsoring a CFP candidate who is changing careers after serving many years in the military. Thanks again for having us here today. Thank you, Danelle. That's that's very informative. Um, Eric, on to you. Tell us more about T. Rowe Price. Yeah, happy to. Thanks, Eddie, and, and everybody for hosting the event. Thanks to all the attendees for, for being here today on a Friday morning or afternoon. Um, so again, Eric Lubkurt from T. Rowe Price, really happy to, to be talking about our company and our opportunities. So some of you might be familiar with T. Rowe Price as a large asset manager. Um, so we're we're uh, one of the larger firms in, in actively managed mutual funds, managing over $1.3 trillion. Um, what you might not know us uh, from is, is financial advice and wealth management. It's a newer part of our business. It's an exciting, growing part of our business. So we recently launched a service called Retirement Advisory Service about a year and a half ago, uh, and are aggressively growing that with new financial planners, uh, and financial advisors, which I'll talk a little bit more about here in a few minutes. Um, maybe I'll just take one step back and talk about uh, broader roles for uh, people that are in college looking for internships as well as recent graduates and, and career changers. So we do have an internship program. Um, we generally host about 100 interns annually, and about a quarter of them are in our distribution channels. Um, which essentially I would think of as like the people talking to clients or working with clients. Um, roughly 65% of those interns come back for full-time employment. So, so it's generally a very successful program. Um, if you're interested in learning more about that, there is um, um, some content within our booth that you can uh, download and, and review. 
Um, in terms of how people generally start with T. Rowe Price, if they're starting within our, our distribution channels, it's, it's uh, oftentimes in a role that we call an associate sales consultant. Um, this is a great way to start to learn how to work with our clients, understand their situation, understand our products and services and position them appropriately. Um, beyond that, uh, we, we do have other roles um, as financial planner, financial advisor, relationship manager um, that I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about here in a few minutes. And then as you can imagine, there's also many roles we have in our investments division, corporate finance, leadership, client experience, technology, um, et cetera. So again, thanks for the opportunity and look forward to chatting more with you today. And thank you, Eric. Um, and uh, Dan, off to you. Tell us more about Vanguard and what you guys are doing. Thanks, Eddie. Thanks for having us. Uh, so for those of you that aren't familiar with Vanguard, we're a, a very large registered investment advisor. Uh, we're the largest mutual fund provider in the world, and we're the second largest ETF provider in the world. Um, for the folks attending the conference, uh, I think we've got a lot of, of really wonderful advisor-related opportunities. Uh, a fun fact about Vanguard, we, we started to get really really serious about advice about seven years ago. And advice uh, over the past five, six years has been by far our fastest growing subdivision. So we're really passionate about giving holistic advice and we're really excited about the future advice and sort of how Vanguard can help shape the future of advice, specifically for college students, which I think are, are probably most of the, the attendees here today. Um, we've got a really wonderful 27 month advisor development program it is a rotational program we'll, where we'll support you through the series licensing, we'll support you through the CFP exam, uh, and then you'll go through a few rotations um, in advisor support, similar to a paraplanner role, a rotation in client services, and then your final rotation will actually be as an advisor, uh, and you'll launch into a book of business advisor role. That's been a really, really popular program uh, and a great program for students coming out of out of school and wanting to get into uh, getting into an advice opportunity. And then we've also got an internship that's been very, very popular. We call that our College to Corporate Advice Internship. It's a 10 week paid internship where we focus a lot on shadowing advisors, learning how to be a great advisor, learning how to sort of find your voice and what you'll sound like as an advisor. Uh, and there's some really fun project work and some fun social opportunities uh, along the way. So I'll, I'll be sharing more about this, those two pro those two programs uh, throughout the panel today. Excited to see everybody. Great, thank you, Dan. Uh, and also great to see such a variety of career opportunities within just these four companies on this panel. And of course, we know there's many more across the profession as a whole. Uh, as we say here at CFP Board, financial planning is definitely not a one size fits all career. And that's just one of many benefits of starting a career in this field. Um, all right, the second question is um, for those in our audience who are new to this profession, um, can you tell us a bit more about entry level positions and career tracks at your firm? And we're going to start off with Danelle at Mission Wealth. Sure. Well, I would just say, first of all, for anyone interested, I would highly encourage the financial planning profession. It's a wonderful way to keep mentally challenged and feel like you're always learning and growing while also feeling like you're helping others and truly making a difference in people's lives. I've been fortunate enough to have been doing this for about 27 years, and I can't recommend it highly enough. Um, at Mission Wealth, our Wealth Advisor Associate position is appropriate for those who are newer to the industry. Candidates benefit from centralized training and a very collaborative team environment where all team members are invested in each other's success. We reimburse up to $5,000 per year in education-related expenses, and we offer some study time during work hours. We have a clear career track for new associates so they can see from the very beginning how we measure success in the role and what actions they may take in order to pursue promotional opportunities. We encourage hands-on participation in client meetings and provide great training for our cutting edge technology stack. We also pair up each new associate with a more senior mentor. So the mentorship program has been very popular 
And through our advisor accelerator program, we teach associates the soft skills required to be an effective advisor and to be successful in this business. We also have study groups for those who are studying together for the CFP exam. Great, thank you, Danelle. Um, Eric, same question for you and what you guys are offering at Tiro Price. Um, yeah, I'll have to actually echo what Danelle said there um, as somebody who's been in the industry in a variety of different roles, including as a client facing advisor for seven years. Um, it's a wonderful career path. So um, congratulations for being here today and um, and thinking about this as a, as a career for you going forward. Um, so I think I'll, I'll use this opportunity to highlight three types of roles. Um, I'll speak specifically, of course, to the way that we think of them at T. Rowe Price, but I would assume that there will be some similarities with some of the other firms as well, and maybe some differences. Um, so one difference I'll share is that T. Rowe Price, we have a role called financial planner, and then we have a role called financial advisor. And, and some firms use them interchangeably. Uh, we don't. We actually view them as two separate roles. Um, so I'll start with those two, and then I'll add a third here in a moment. So our financial planners um, here do have to be CFPs. We believe very strongly in that designation. Um, they are not client facing, and instead our financial planners are um, reviewing all of the information that we have received from clients and from client facing associates, including a comprehensive questionnaire that they complete. And then the financial planner is actually building a financial plan. Uh, this financial plan is then passed off to the financial advisor who is the client facing associate. Uh, the financial advisor, depending on level, uh, either has to be a CFP or it's, it's just CFP preferred. Um, this is the person that engages directly with clients. So as you can imagine, while um, both roles are interesting and, and have um, a lot of value to them, some people gravitate a little bit more to one versus the other. Maybe the more analytical person that's interested in sort of digging into a financial situation might enjoy the financial planner role, somebody that really enjoys interfacing with clients, maybe a little bit more in the financial advisor role. So just wanted to give a few details on each of those. Um, financial, one more comment about the financial advisor role. Um, we do have several different levels for these individuals. And generally speaking, the level associates associates with the amount of wealth of the client. So higher up you get in the wealth spectrum, the more complexity we generally see. Thus, we usually have higher level people um, serving those clients. The third career path that I just wanted to highlight is probably a little bit closer to uh, what a lot of my team focuses on today, which is advice methodology and, and partnering with our multi-asset group within our investments division. So this isn't so much putting a plan together or delivering a financial plan to a client, but it's really trying to work with our team to develop the best portfolio construction methodology, uh, the best financial planning offer we can. Um, so we make a lot of decisions about what our offer should look like, what enhancements we should make, um, how we rebalance portfolios, how we structure uh, the, the offer, uh, the funds, et cetera. So that's another avenue that individuals could consider that might not be top of mind. Thank you, Eric. Great to see all those options at, at Tiro Price. Um, Shelly, same question for you. Tell us more about what uh, you have going on at Merrill Wealth. Sure, absolutely. So we have uh, what we refer to as our advisor development program. And this program has multiple entry points uh, along the way and can really last anywhere between uh, two years and six years, depending upon somebody's level of experience and business acumen, and then how they are uh, performing and developing against their goals and against their, uh, their different criteria. So for our unlicensed associates, uh, you can start as a, uh, what we refer to as an ADP FSA. Uh, we're working to get you licensed. You are sitting uh, and working in a financial center, beginning to get, uh, interactions with clients um, and really getting used to that type of interaction and what it uh, what that looks like. After you progress from that point, you move into uh, the, the Merrill Wealth Management space where you're sitting, where you're working every day. Uh, and really uh, you are provided with uh, clients to call 
uh, to continue to work on down this avenue. And in this uh, role that is anywhere from 12 to 18 months, you're really focusing on how to uh, be able to close business and uh, gather additional assets. You're focusing on how to have planning discussions with clients uh, and ensuring that you have those tools available and that you're helping clients to reach their goals and get solidified uh, within that. And then you're certainly talking about you know, our, our different products and services, right? We range everything uh, that you can think of in the investment space uh, and what that means and what's most appropriate um, for the client. Um, you know, certainly CFPs are, are welcome here in, in any of those roles. You don't have to have a CFP to get into those roles, uh, but you do have that option available um, through, you know, and we have multiple programs to help support uh, getting your CFP in addition to uh, getting licensed. And then the final phase uh, is uh, the precursor to being a, a full advisor, which is anywhere from one to four years, uh, where again, you are really continuing to build and develop that book of business and that client base uh, and being able to move forward. And at this point, you can certainly, you can team with additional advisors. Uh, you can team with other folks uh, that are in the development program and really making sure that you are continuing to add on uh, where some of these roles uh, make sense, right? Uh, for those folks that don't want to be business developers, that do not want uh, necessarily that responsibility of uh, developing business and going out and getting clients, and that's not the right path for you, uh, we do certainly have uh, other roles, uh, something called a planning analyst that exists on a team and that is really just salary based, serves that team uh, and serves that that client base. So uh, CFP is uh, certainly a, a preferred method for that, right? In order for our, any of our teams to be qualified, uh, they have to have additional designations, uh, CFP being one of them. And there's value uh, added throughout the, those pieces of the program. Um, and going back to, you know, something Danelle said about mentorships and, and along the way, uh, these are all programs that have, uh, you know, full training, mentorships, uh, and various programs throughout. Uh, and in addition to our mentorships developed specifically for our advisor development programs, uh, we also offer many things through our various uh, employee affinity groups, right? Whether it be our women's exchange um, or some of our other employee networks, uh, we are certainly um, encouraging folks to, to get mentors through that arena and have those mentor uh, and training programs as well. Thanks, Eddie. Thank you, Shelley. I mean, it's just great to see so much variety in terms of options for our new entrants um, and the fact you're supporting them with development through CFP certification. Um, I would just add for our audience, if you haven't already, I encourage you to learn more about different career tracks, career entry points in the profession by downloading CFP boards guide to careers in financial planning right from the resources tab of today's career fair. Um, great resource. You can also learn about types of companies in this field and how to find that right career track for you. Um, all right. Our next question is for Dan at, at Vanguard. Um, for college students and recent graduates in our audience who might be interested in an internship, can you share more about your firm's internship program? Yeah, thanks, Eddie. We've got a we've got a really, really wonderful internship offer at Vanguard. So the first thing to know is we're we're based out of four main sites. So for our internship, we have opportunities in Charlotte, North Carolina, opportunities in Malvern, Pennsylvania, opportunities in Dallas, Texas, and opportunities in Scottsdale, Arizona. When we thought about our internship, we really we really sort of thought about three pillars. So the first one is is paying a fair wage. Um, we do have a paid internship. And then on top of that, we provide housing in those four sites. So you don't have to be from you know, Charlotte, for example, to be in the Charlotte internship. You can be from anywhere and we'll provide uh, housing through a local college or university, which is really exciting. The second piece is development as an advisor. And this is an area where I think our internship is particularly strong. 
during our internship, it's 10 weeks. You'll spend five weeks um, in one area of advice we call Mass Affluent, and that's where you're working as an advisor with clients um, with assets under management of fifty to $500,000. And then you'll spend five weeks in our high net worth group. And those are book of business advisors with clients, uh, $500,000 and up. And something that was really important for us when we thought about our internship was the ability to shadow. Um, so we have some mentors and some buddies built into our internship that you'll get to shadow every day. Um, our interns on average will shadow three to four client appointments a day. And that's a really great way to find your voice as an advisor, to see what it's like to be an advisor. And I think the most important thing is to sort of bridge the gap from the technical that you're learning in school. I think a lot of the financial planning majors across the country do a really wonderful job of teaching you, you know, the technical pieces of financial planning. And our internship will help you bridge the gap to the behavioral. So you'll you'll see things that you learned about in class and say, oh my gosh, that's how you do that with a client. That's how maybe you help a client with something like a required minimum distribution, for example. So there's a lot of opportunities to shadow. There's some really fun high impact project work. Our interns uh, a couple summers ago actually got to work on our digital advisor, our robo advice tool release. That was a, a multi-billion dollar release. And our interns were able to help look at that and think about different tools that we could add to our robo advice and, and work with our IT folks to sort of deliver on that, which was really exciting. And then the third piece that I think is really important, and Eric actually touched on this earlier in one of his answers, uh, is the conversion opportunity. So we convert uh, right at around 92% of our interns to the full-time financial advisor development program job job opportunity. And I think the really important piece about that, you know, 90 plus percent number is folks are, we're not only giving folks the opportunity to convert by saying, hey, you've done a great job, come join us full-time but folks are accepting that opportunity. And I think that's really important. They're saying, hey, this is where I wanna go for my first job. Um, so I think we've done a really, really good job of, of checking those, the boxes of those three pillars. And then there's a company called Vault that ranks internships. Uh, and last year in 2022, we were ranked the number one internship in finance and the number one internship in financial planning. So we were really, really proud of that. Um, and if you come by the Vanguard booth today, I'll be there, happy to talk to you about internships. Thank you. Thank you, Dan, and congratulations on those awards. That sounds very impressive. Um, Danielle, you mentioned internships at Mission Wealth earlier. Tell us more about that program at your company. Yes, we also have an internship program. We just hired interns for the summer of 2023, and we do actively recruit interns from college campuses that are near some of our larger offices so that we can maximize in-person learning. Uh, our paid interns work flexible hours around their school schedules and have exposure to all of the same training and support that our advisors benefit from. We provide a supportive yet challenging environment for interns to learn and grow, and we also have the ultimate goal of hiring interns full time upon their graduation. For interns that started with us last year, they are coming on full-time this year after they graduate, and we look forward to having them as full-time members of the team. Great. Thank you, Danelle. And, and then something I would just add for our audience, you know, internships also let you learn more about your own preferences, your own interests. So you can decide, you know, do you want to stay in the current career track where that internship is leading you or maybe migrate uh, into something else that is better aligned with your skills and interests. So a great resource to get started for students and college graduates is the, indeed an internship. Um, all right, uh, the next question is, uh, tell us more about the career track at your firm for career changers, for career changers who might have gained experience in a different profession or industry altogether other than financial services. I'm going to go back to you, Shelly, on this one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I know in our last discussion, I talked about our advisor development program and being able to enter that uh, at various entry points along the way. And that's really based on business acumen and skill set uh, and, and where folks may be, uh, may be coming through that. And, and for folks that are uh, much longer sort of in the sales cycle, uh, in the skill set for their sales experience and really interacting uh, with clients and what that may look like. 
uh, again, talk about some of those additional roles uh, that we have available at Merrill or some of those analyst roles to become uh, part of a team to, to sort of bypass uh, the advisor development program um, and, and be able to come directly into an advisor role, uh, offer various stages uh, along that path, right? We certainly see the value in uh, skills, you know, gathered from other industries, whether it's, you know, career military retirement, whether it is other sales industries uh, and working through some of, some of those pieces, uh, really that acumen uh, and some of that attitude is, is something you can't teach that you learn in, in, uh, in other areas uh, and various different industries. And we wanna be able to celebrate that. We wanna be able to have that through. Uh, of course, you know, for the vast majority of our roles, you do need to be licensed, uh, and there are some things, you know, you can achieve your uh, your initial licenses, your securities industry essentials, or your Series 66 um, on your own without being sponsored, and if you're thinking about, you know, coming into the financial uh, industry uh, outside of anything else, I suggest that you do that and start there uh, in, in that place, but, but definitely want to be able to uh, promote and continue to develop those that have that skill set. We value those different uh, skill sets along the way, and there's various programs to be able to do that. Uh, really, you know, across the country, uh, where, wherever we are based, and uh, being able to have that locally, uh, and not necessarily something that is uh, th that is more centralized. Great, great. Thank you, Shelley. Uh, back to you, Dan. Uh, tell us more about what Vanguard is doing in, in this regard. Yeah, we've got some great opportunities here. And there are a few questions in the q and I'll try to incorporate into my answer if that's okay, Eddie. Um, we have a, we have a three month paid internship program specifically for um, career changers and folks that are looking to return to the workforce. So when I think about some recent candidates who've gone through that, um, we'll see a lot of mothers who are interested in getting back in the workforce. We'll see a lot of uh, military members and veterans who are interested in getting in financial planning. And then we see a lot of candidates from just other employment opportunities who said, hey, I'm interested in being a, I'm interested in being a planner. I'm interested in being an advisor. Uh, and this is a great program for that. So we'll bring in a, a number of candidates to one of our four sites. And there was a question about uh, remote opportunities. And, and right now at, at Vanguard specifically, most of the opportunities are in what we're calling the hybrid model. So you're in office Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and you're working from home Monday, Friday. Uh, and this program would fall in that, that hybrid model as well. But we've got a great mentorship program for these career changers and these candidates who are returning to work. So we focus a lot on coaching and development to become a, a really, really great advisor. Um, we've thought through some of the skills that are needed to be a, a really strong planner. Um, so we have a lot of learning and development type sessions. We'll have leaders across our advice offering uh, come in and teach different classes on some of the client relationship skills you'll need to be a great advisor, some of the sales, sales skills you'll need. Uh, and then we have a number of advisors and subject matter experts who will teach you how to be a, a really, really strong, holistic you know, financial planner. Um, and then after the three months, you'll have the opportunity to convert directly to an advisor role and once in that role, we'll help you with the uh, series licensing, the, the FINRA licenses, specifically the SIE, the Series 7, and the Series 66. Uh, and then we've got a, a really wonderful CFP program that's a year long where we'll help you go through the educational components of the, the CFP. And then we'll help you through resources, through time, through you know private tutoring and things like that. We'll help, we'll help ensure you pass the CFP exam. Um, and that's been a really great program for career changers and folks that are looking to return to the workforce and are interested specifically in financial planning. And there was a question about hiring. We hire for that role at about three different times per year. So um, typically, you know, March, June, September timeframe. Great, thank you. Thank you, Dan, very informative. Um, I would add from, from CFP board's perspective that we see a lot of career changers become successful CFP professionals um, coming from professions outside of financial services. We heard, of course, from our panelists about veterans, for example. Um, so all that to say is that financial planning is a great profession for career changers. 
especially if you developed your skills already in a different profession uh, when you were helping people. Because above, above all, financial planning is a helping people profession. Um, all right, our next question is um, for Eric uh, over at Tiro Price. Um, can you please tell us about training and professional development uh, programs uh, that your firm offers, specifically uh, the support you provide for attaining CFP certification? I think you mentioned that a bit in your prior responses, but uh, please feel free to elaborate. Sure, happy to. Um, yeah, I'll start there. So there are a variety of um, groups within T. Rowe Price that do support um, the CFP certification um, either by paying for it outright or reimbursement, sort of depending on the situation. Um, that can include uh, both the um, educational program as, as well as the test itself. Um, it, getting a little bit broader than that, uh, we also do support all licensing. So if somebody comes in without licenses or without all of the licenses needed um, to one of the roles that, that requires those licenses, we do uh, provide time, um, you know, paid time during work to be able to, to prepare for those with study groups and training programs, and then um, you know, to successfully take those exams and complete them. Um, there are other certifications that we do support as well, in addition to the CFP, uh, sort of depending on the role and the type of department that someone's in uh, and why they might be pursuing it. Great, great. And back to you, Dan, on this one. Uh, tell us more about training at Vanguard. Yeah, so holistically at Vanguard, we have a corporate CFP program for anybody at the firm who's interested in in gaining that, that CFP certification. Um, that's where we'll take you through the, the one-year educational component and then you know, support you as you take the test. Uh, and then we'll, we'll fund uh, that whole experience so you won't have to come out of pocket. That's been a great program um, for folks in some of the, the more entry level roles at Vanguard who are interested in getting an advice. Specifically for our advisor development program participants, we have a little bit of an enhanced offer. So we work with uh, Serify to provide the, the resources and, and tutoring and really everything you need to pass the CFP exam. And on top of that, we provide seven to eight weeks of uh, paid study where for about two months, all you're doing is studying for the CFP exam, and you have access to proctors, you have access to a group we call Vanguard University, which are folks who teach the CFP exam uh, and some of the different FINRA licensing exams. Uh, and we've had really, really strong pass rates through our advisor development programs because we're providing the time and resources to be successful, um, specifically with the CFP exam. So the the paid study time plus the resources we're providing through Vanguard and then also externally through Serify um, have given us a, a really, really strong offer for our advisor development program participants. And this has allowed them to have really strong pass rates through our program. That's terrific. Uh, same question for you, Shelley. Sure. So our training um, throughout sort of all of our roles, we have something with, that we refer to as the academy. Uh, which is really focused on uh, training our individuals across, you know, Bank of America and Merrill Lynch, uh, and has different components based upon what role you're in and what uh, what line of business. And that is always, you know, a sort of a separate from role of experience where you have that self study time, that time to go through uh, training and, uh, and and development along the way. I mentioned before about licensing, right? This is through our academy program. Uh, and others as well. And then specific to the CFP, uh, for those who are looking to uh, achieve the CFP or, and or even portions of the CFP in the various modules, uh, again, we offer that through our academy program. Uh, we offer various uh, different paths for the CFP uh, over you know, each year where there's three different you know, entry points throughout the year. Uh, obviously, it's a it's a much longer course of study uh, that you, uh, you you know can't can't run regularly, uh, but that you have at different intervals based upon the length of that study uh, and what that looks like. And then again, allowing some of that self study time uh, and focusing really on what is somebody going to achieve uh, with their CFP and working through it. And then of course, um, you know, practicing for the exam and and uh, helping sit for that. Uh, as well. 
Great, great, very, very helpful. Um, uh, context for our audience that I would add from my perspective at, at CFP board, I mean, you can see here clearly that companies are offering uh, support to get your CFP certification because it really signals to, to their clients that you have met rigorous training and committed to high professional standards to provide financial planning advice. Uh, CFP board also has a number of resources available to you as you pursue a CFP certification. We have scholarships. We also have a mentorship program. We have an online community of, um, where you can connect with other candidates pursuing certification, just to name a few. And you can access all of these resources through the resources tab within um, this career fairs menu. So we encourage you to do so as well. Um, all right, our last question is, um, what advice would you give to uh, current college students, recent graduates and career changers to really find and advance along their ideal career path in financial planning? So let's bring all that together with this question. And I'm going to go uh, first to you, Danelle, on this one. Well, there's so many things, but since we're all responding and I have to just pick one, I would say to find a mentor to reach out to someone maybe you know or someone you don't know in the profession and ask them to mentor you. I think for many, uh, they would love the opportunity to give back and to support someone entering the profession. And there's so much that can be gained from learning from someone where it's not with the pressure of applying for a job or working for someone, but just a pure mentorship relationship. That's what I would recommend. Yeah, that's a great point. And our research here at CFP Board also reinforces the importance of mentorship. Um, Eric, uh, same question for you. What's your one big tip? Um, yeah, the caveat here is it's a bit cliche, but it's going to be put yourself out there, and I'll explain why I picked that. Um, most people don't, so it's it's easy to say that. But once you've decided what you want, um, I, I would say go out and ask for it, uh, make it known. Um, you know, more tactically, if if you want to work for one of our firms, you should reach out to us and tell us that. Uh, you should be investigating the opportunities and making the connections. Um, you know, while uh, we're here to, or you're here to look for employers, we're here to look for employees, right? So it's uh, it's very much um, you know a symbiotic relationship here. So if you do decide that you want uh, you know something, I, I would say that we're really interested in speaking with you, and don't hesitate. I like that. I like that. Uh, Dan, on to you on this one. Yeah, thanks, Eddie. I, I actually go to different college campuses and speak to financial planning classes about this topic specifically. And Danelle and Eric have nailed it. <clears throat> my my first two components are usually, hey, like be visible, put yourself out there, um, find a great mentor. And I'll, I'll just give one tip. So I'll go to the third one, not to take any away from Shelley. So the, the third one for us is... Um, really having a good solid understanding of of your why. Um, anytime you apply for a role as a planner or an advisor, someone's going to say, hey, why do you want to be an advisor? Why do you want to be a planner? So have a really, really solid understanding and a good answer prepared for that. Um, when you think about why you want to be a financial planner, and then I always encourage people, if you are passionate, showcase that passion. Show that you're passionate about being a financial planner and you want to be an advisor. Um, that's a, I've always thought that's a really great tip. Yeah, that's a good that's a great point, Dan. Uh, Shelley, great the, points. The benefit of I'm sure the, you have the, the benefit and the detriment of going last is that uh, everybody before you, my my other panelists, uh, stole some great tips, right, and uh, and already shared those with you. Uh, but then I get to add something something additional to it. So I I completely agree uh, with everything that Eric, Dan, and and Danelle said, right, uh, and, and would agree with that advice. The other piece that I would tell you. Um, and this really piggybacks on what Dan said about understanding your why. Understand the role and the environment that you really want. And, and what is that, right? We all work uh, here in very different and very successful companies that offer various opportunities uh, for planners, right? And for financial professionals, uh, but they are all very different types of platforms and structures and organizations uh, and really understand the type of organization um, that you want to be in, the type of role that you want to be in, uh, and what the you know sort of benefits 
um, you know, are to that and what some of the challenges are. Uh, and really understand that as you are exploring where you want your career to be uh, and where you want to go. That's a terrific point. Yeah, thank you, Shelley. Um, all right, so we've covered all of our questions for our panelists, and now we can turn our attention to questions from the audience. Um, let's look and see what we have here. We have one question. Uh, what about opportunities for relatively new CFP professionals already have certification uh, looking for an opportunity? Who wants to take I'm this happy one to on? take that one to start. And okay. Happy to happy to jump in. Um, right now, we're hiring straight into our what we call our high net worth book of business advisor role, um, and that is for advisors with their CFP. That's a true book of business role. So you'll have you'll have anywhere from about 150 to 200 households, um, and each household will have somewhere from 500,000 to about 2 million assets under management. And you'll be their direct holistic advisor. Uh, that's been a really really popular role at Vanguard, um, where you get to go and practice you know holistic advice with a large large book of clients and get to build relationships, get to know them, get to help them make their financial dreams come true. Um, and we're hiring for that right now in the moment. Great, thank you, Dan. Yeah, I, I, I'd agree, right? Our, our advisor development program that I, that I just talked about, uh, certainly we are hiring for that on a regular sort of monthly, monthly starts and monthly cadence, um, be, be uh, available to explore that, whether through you know, uh, the licensed entry point or the unlicensed entry point uh, and have that available to you. Great, thank you, Shelley. Um, we have a question from a career changer, but within the industry, um, asking what kinds of roles are available for experienced hires in the finance industry, uh, but not necessarily in wealth management or advice space. Um, Eric, do you want to take on this one? Happy to. Um, yeah, so so that's great that we have a variety of, of different people with different experiences here today. Um, so when we talk about career changers, I think we often think of it as somebody who is in a different industry and, and looking to move into financial services and maybe specifically uh, advice and financial planning. But it sounds like this question is somebody who's already within the industry. So I guess I'll first start by saying um, there's no reason to think that you won't be able to move directly into a financial planner or financial advisor role. You know, assuming you're qualified, um, just because you don't have experience there uh, previously, right? So we, we have a lot of examples of clients that, or excuse me, advisors and planners that have moved into those roles. You have to start somewhere. And like I said earlier, we do have a variety of different levels um, within those roles that might be appropriate for you. So I would say if you're interested in financial advisor or financial planning roles, no reason to think that those are, are off the table. And then just one additional comment you know, like any large company, um, we have roles all over the place, right? So we have corporate finance roles and we have wealth management roles and we have investment roles and we have HR and technology and client experience and marketing and, you know, everything else that you can imagine. So, um, you know, another thing to keep in mind is that these firms here today are very much focused on, on the financial planning industry. But if you're interested in these firms, but maybe something a little bit outside of that niche area, I'm sure most or all of our firms have those opportunities. So feel free to engage us in the virtual booths and we can speak more to your specific situation. Thank you, Eric. And I would say this response also applies to um, one of our audience members who asked about, uh, you know, he's a 35 year um, CPA veteran with experience in a public and private company audit and controllership setting. Um, again, you know, somebody within the industry like that will, will certainly look at uh, that experience as something that qualifies you for a career in financial planning. Uh, so please check out our employers in the virtual exhibit hall. Um, we have a question. Um, can you discuss financial planning methodology and partnership with advisors in your firm? What are some unique skills that would be desirable for a financial planning professional? How does your firm systematically develop financial planners? Uh, Danelle, uh, would you like to take on this one? 
Sure, I would love to. Thank you. I would say for the methodology, we do follow the CFP board, you know, outlined uh, methodology for financial planning. We don't need to really reinvent the wheel there. But as far as the partnership, we really believe in peer learning. And through a very collaborative environment, we encourage our advisors to teach and learn from one another. So we offer multiple opportunities, not only through the mentorship program, which is more of a one-on-one, -on -one, but also in group settings. And I would say the unique skills that we typically look for would be um, values based that are in alignment with our firm core values. So the firm core values at Mission Wealth that we're also seeking in candidates are caring. So as uh, we said, as Eddie said, this is really about helping people. So having a very caring approach, um, treating your team members with caring as well as your clients. Um, being growth minded, so being really curious and open to new ideas and to learning. You can't really have a fixed mindset in this profession. Um, being committed. There are times when it is hard. You know, we go through a pandemic, we go through market corrections, we go through recessions, and you really have to be committed to this profession, committed to your clients. That type of mentality is really important. And then I would say adaptable because the world and the environment that we're in are constantly changing. So we look for candidates who exemplify being adaptable in the changing environment. Um, the way that we develop financial planners is through some of the programs that I've mentioned, like our mentorship program, our advisor accelerator program. We know that our advisors will learn the technical skills they need through the CFP curriculum and through passing that exam, but we focus internally on the soft skills advisors need, uh, how to connect with clients, how to follow nonverbal cues, how to help clients who are grieving, how to deal with clients who are unhappy or frustrated, um, how to talk with clients about earning referrals from their friends or family members. So we focus on that type of training as well to really help our advisors succeed in their careers. Thank you, Danelle, that, that is very helpful. Um, we have a couple of questions about internships that I think I'll pass on to you, Dan, and anyone else who wants to chime in, please feel free. Uh, there's a question, are there internship slash job opportunities for recent graduates that do not have financial job experience yet, specifically in finance accounting, not in a financial advisor position? And then a question, are there any opportunities for part-time work or flexible hours to support uh, those who desire to enter the profession but still have younger kids to tend to? So not necessarily both internship related, but uh, questions that we've just gotten from our audience. Uh, Dan, do you want to take us first? Yeah, I can start um, with sort of Vanguard's rules and regulations, if you will. I think we'll probably all have different requirements. But um, for the first question around our internships, uh, all of our internships are for juniors, rising seniors. So our internships will run during the summer from June to August. Uh, and we want our interns to be uh, going into their senior year when they complete the internship. So that summer between the junior and senior year. Uh, and then there was another question about uh, alternate internship and job opportunities. And at Vanguard, we have, uh, we're a very big firm. So we have a ton of internships and we do have internships specifically re related to uh, accounting and finance. So we, we do have opportunities there. Yeah, and I'll, I'll piggyback on that. So similar to uh, to Vanguard, all of our, uh, what are very specifically internships uh, encoded that way are for college juniors, rising seniors um, to uh, to be able to complete. So then we can, you know, uh, potentially have job offers uh, for, for when someone is completing their degree. Uh, however, in terms of the question about part-time uh, work and other, you know, uh, opportunities, uh, we, we definitely offer some things uh, that are very flexible, uh, depending upon where where somebody is and what the needs of that organization are. So whether that is in uh, finance and accounting, whether that is something through uh, one of our client associate roles uh, that is really helping to uh, support our clients um, and an advisor's book of business more on the servicing side to begin to get to know uh, the, the area of level. We, we offer um, that throughout the base. All of our advisor roles, however, are full time. 
um, they, they, you know, get more flexible over time. And as you, you know, sort of grow your book of business and, and grow your wealth, but especially for the advisor development portion, right, it is, it is uh, certainly full time plus uh, as you were really working through some of those different avenues. Yeah, that's a good point, uh, Shelley. Uh, you know, one of the benefits of this career as well is that ability to set your own schedule, but, you know, typically it comes as you develop your, um, your career first. Um, question from uh, an audience member. I am a career changer and recently completed all of my CFP requirements. I have been caught in the catch-22 of wanting to find a role as a producing advisor but not having enough experience in financial services. Any advice on that? Um, Danell, I think that um, this one is a good one for you. Yeah, I would say my advice would be to be patient. I do think that as a career changer, you bring a tremendous benefit and value to this profession. Um, you'll probably, you know, assuming you are more senior in age than a lot of people that are just coming out of college, you're probably more in the same demographic as many clients that you might be meeting with and have experienced many of the same life events that clients have experienced. So bringing that is of great value. So I would say just to be patient. Um, there are opportunities out there and you may need to start at a level lower than what you had anticipated, but I do believe it will pay off. I would also suggest everything's becoming more and more technology based as many of us are working in hybrid or remote environments and communicating with each other virtually, whether it's with our team members or with our clients is I would suggest to get up to speed as much as you can on the different major software programs that a lot of firms use. So learn Money Guide Pro, learn eMoney. Um, to get experience if you can, if you can with the different investment and um, portfolio software programs as well as CRMs. Take classes um, and learn there so that you can come in with a little bit of familiarity. I think that will make you a more attractive candidate as well. Thanks, Danielle. Great point, uh, Eric. Would you add anything to this? Yeah, just one or, or two quick uh, additional items. So. As much as my 25-year-old self would hate me saying this uh, when I was an advisor back then, life experience does matter. I agree with what Danelle had said, right? So don't sell yourself short. You might have uh, been in a completely different career, but if you've met the requirements for the CFP, um, that means you have uh, knowledge and then at least some experience within the industry, as well as life experience. And, and that really is important to be able to relate to clients and prospective clients. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Um, and then if, if you are in a situation where you want to become a financial advisor or financial planner, but aren't quite there yet, or maybe you do need some of that industry experience to fully qualify, um, we offer that as well. We have a variety of roles that are sort of financial advisor adjacent um, that would, would be qualifying experience, um, but uh, not quite you know, being an advisor or providing advice to clients. So something to consider. Thank you, Eric. Um, we have a question. Um, are your positions salary and commission slash bonus or primarily commission based? And is there a time frame or time period to keep in mind? Yeah, I can I can start on that one for uh, for, for Merrill. So our advisor development program that I've talked about is salary uh, plus, you know, sort of a modified commission. Uh, as well as opportunities for bonuses along the way. Uh, and again, that program, you know, sort of varies in entry points and length, depending upon how someone is performing. Uh, and then our advisor roles are fully commission-based. So it is, you know, we, we've done a lot of work within the program to be able to smooth any sort of compensation cliff uh, and understand that along the way. So it starts as salary and commission, uh, and then eventually it moves into full commission and obviously rate change uh, over time. Thank you, Shelley. Would anyone want to add anything to that? So I would say at Mission Wealth, it's primarily salary with the opportunity for bonuses. So we do have some component that's variable, but it is primarily a fixed compensation structure. Very similar at Vanguard. It's, it's uh, mostly salary, some performance-related bonuses, and, and mostly a fixed structure. Yep. 
Yeah, same same for T-Row price, salary plus bonus, no commission. Yeah, and that's something else about this career. It's, it's not a one size fits all either when it comes to compensation, which is also a great uh, benefit of, of this profession. Um, I see a couple of questions about additional resources and reading material about career tracks. Again, CFP Board's Guide to Careers in Financial Planning is available for download in the Resources tab of the Career Fair. Also, you can contact CFP Board after the event. We'll help you get to that resource. Um, and we're just about out of time. Um, I want to thank our wonderful panelists for an excellent and insightful discussion. I also want to thank, of course, our audience for great questions. Um, I encourage you now to join our employers in the virtual exhibit hall uh, to learn more about careers at their companies. Uh, again, you can talk to recruiters and experts there. Uh, you can apply for open positions. You can have chats, one-on-one -on -one video meetings. Um, and if you missed any of this panel today, a recording will be available on CFP Board's Career Center job board and on our YouTube channel. Um, I hope you've had uh, a productive career fair and a best of luck in your career search. Thank you all and take care. Thanks everyone.